Hello, it's Mr Giles here. Uh, before we start, this lesson is suitable for years 9 and 10 GCC students who are studying design and technology. Uh, the specific lesson is going to be within the topic of developments in new materials and the lesson will be about smart materials. You will need a pen and paper and a pencil and a blank piece of paper to uh, get on with this lesson. So I'll give you a bit of time to get that or you can just pause the video. OK, the first thing I'd like to do is introduce the lesson objective, uh, and that is to understand what smart materials are and how they can be applied to real products. Now, you'll have a good working memory of normal materials. And when I say normal materials, I mean things like wood and different types of wood. So pine wood and oak wood uh, and so on. Uh, smart materials are very unusual materials which you will not come across in a normal workshop situation but they are materials which you need to know about in order to help you to design your products in the future and also you will be examined on them uh, during your GCCs. Okay the first thing I'd like to do is introduce you to what the actual definition of a smart material is. So smart materials are materials that have one or more properties that can be changed by external stimuli. And it sounds very complicated, but basically what it means is it's a material that when you apply something from the outside of the material to it, the actual physical properties of the material change. So for example, you can apply stress to the material and something will happen to the material's properties. Um, you may change the external temperature, uh, which the material is experiencing and the material's properties will change. You might change moisture. The pH, so the acidity level that the material is experiencing, could change its properties. Um, and you might apply an electronic or magnetic field to the material and that will cause its properties to change. So at the moment this is going to sound very complicated, so what I'm going to do for the rest of the lesson is I'm going to go through lots of different examples of these materials uh, and hopefully you'll be a bit more familiar with it. What's really important on this slide though is that first definition, smart materials are materials that have one or more properties that can be changed by external stimuli. That is something you need to try and remember as best you can. Now, what I would normally do at this stage is I would go through a YouTube video which will uh, show you how smart materials work because that's the easiest way to explain. Uh, I can't do that on this slideshow, so what I would recommend you do now is you either use the YouTube link below or you have a search for smart materials in YouTube yourself and, and have a watch. The, the video below is about five minutes long. So the first type of smart material that I'd like to discuss with you are thermochromic pigments. So thermochromic pigments. It's important that you take note of the, the thermo part of the thermochromic because that implies that it's to do with temperature. So thermochromic pigments and ink are used in colour changing products when they react to temperature. So when the temperature changes, the product changes colour and the colour changes back when it returns to its original temperature. OK, so that is the official definition of a thermochromic pigment. Um, what's really important though is you understand how you might use this type of thermochromic pigment on a real product. So that's what I've done for the rest of the slide. So possible ways you could use thermochromic pigments in real life products. So this first one is a thermochromic ink, which has been put on a, a hard boiled egg. So when it's uh, boiled, you know whether it's soft, whether it's hard, and, um, which you know saves you lots of time. Uh, this is a real common example of a thermochromic uh, material and it's on the side of a, it's like a fish tank thermometer. So you put it on the side of a fish tank like a sticker and it'll tell you how, uh, what, what temperature the water is. Um, this is a bit of a novelty one. So you can buy these uh, types of mugs so that, that when you put the hot water in the mug, uh, something will happen to the mug. So in this case, it's just revealing the picture of a ship. And the last one, this is just a bit of a gimmicky one. So this is to, to let you know whether somebody sat on the toilet seat or not. So you might be a bit funny about that. Uh, so some, sometimes they're very serious applications. Sometimes they're just fun. Okay, the next smart material I want to discuss is a photochromic material. Again, I'm just emphasizing that word photochromic because photo implies something to do with light. Okay, so a photochromic ink and materials darken as the light level increases. So photochromic materials and inks change colour. In fact, it is UV light that causes the darkening of the ink or the material, which means the ink works best in natural light. 
So the special income material has two main applications and that's things like sunglasses and spectacles. So that's where you'll see this material used um, very, you know, very often. So the example I've got here is a, it's a pair of sunglasses. So when you go outside, they, they haze over and they become shaded. And when you're inside, they go clear. So you can, you know, they are actually quite common if you've got very sensitive eyes and it's really important that you need to wear sunglasses quite a lot. Obviously, they're more expensive than normal sunglasses because they do have this specialist smart material built within them. OK, the next smart material I'd like to discuss with you is electrochromic materials. Now, I'm going to again emphasize that word electro because uh, that implies that it's the external stimulus is something to do with electricity, which it is. So smart glass or switchable glass is glass or glazing whose light transmission properties are altered when voltage, light or heat is applied. Now, that's quite complicated. So put that a bit more simply. What this means is when a small current of electricity is passed through the glass, it blocks out light. Uh, and when there is no current of electricity, it goes back to being clear. OK, so again, probably easier if you think about it in its real application. So here's an example of electrochromic glass which changes opacity when electrical charge is passed through it. So uh, it's got lots of different uses. So this, is, this one is an office glass, so you can see it's clear when the light's switched on or the electricity is applied, it, it hazes over the glass to block the light out. Uh, and this is a, a, an example of it being used in the, 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 the windows of a car. It's not very common because it is very, very expensive, but it's, it's one of those things which will, I imagine will take off quite a lot over the next sort of five to 10 years as, as technology becomes cheaper. OK, what I'd like to do now is just have a bit of a pause and a recap. This is where you can use your pen and paper and you can start having a go at a few uh, little tasks just to see what you've remembered from what we've or what I've just been discussing. Um, so what we've actually covered is that the official definition of a smart material, it is something you do, need, you do need to try and commit to memory as much as you can. Um, and I've introduced you to three different types of smart materials. OK, it's just a quick multiple choice question. Uh, what of the following applications is an example of a photochromic material? So is it the changing of the sun lenses from clear to shaded when the light levels change, the changing of glass to opaque when a current of electricity passes through it, or when a material changes colour when heat is changed? So if you um, give yourself about five minutes on that task, um, or just pause the video, um, and then I'll give you the answer. So the answer is number one, the changing of sunglass lenses from clear to shaded when the light levels change. So you could have got the answer to that one quite quickly just by looking at the word photochromic and looking at the word photo, because photo always is, is always relevant to light. OK, same again, another multiple choice question. So what of the following applications is an example of an electrochromic material? Again, if you pause it and you can give yourself as much time, but try not to spend more than five minutes. So the answer is the changing of glass to opaque when a current of electricity passes through it. Again, same thing. If you look at the word electrochromic, you know that the material is something to do with electricity, which could have helped you answer that question. OK, again, same as before. What of the following applications is an example of a thermochromic material? So if you pause it and I'll give you the answer. And it's uh, when a material changes colour, when heat is changed. So again, if you just looked at that word thermochromic and then take the uh, note of the part thermo, that's to do with heat. Um, and that would have given you an indication as to what the answer was. OK, so this is seeing what you've remembered from the discussions that I've had so far. Can you try and write down the definition of a smart material? OK, really, really try hard to do this from memory. I'm going to put the answer up so you can record the correct answer because I know you want the correct answer for your notes. But give yourself a good sort of five minutes to have a think about that. And this is a classic exam question. It comes up very often in GCSEs and it is quite easy to answer. But it's one of those things that you tend to forget if you don't try and commit it to memory. OK, so again, if you pause it and give yourself as much time as you'd like, but try and spend no more than sort of five minutes on it. So the answer is smart materials are materials that have one or more properties that can be changed by external stimuli. Um, and if you try and use those keywords, so stimuli, 
uh, in your answers, you, you know, you're likely to get better marks in your exam. OK, I'm going to continue with a few more common smart materials. So the next one are shape memory alloys. Now, shape memory alloys. So for most materials, if they're bent out of shape, they stay that way. And this is called plastic deformation. However, if a part is made from what's called a shape memory, memory alloy, it's often SMA, uh, it is bent out of shape. Uh, when it is heated above a certain temperature, it will return to its original shape. So it has a, mem it has a memorized shape, which it will return to. So again, it's probably easier to describe this or explain this using some possible applications. So the first one are glasses frames. So these will naturally return to their original shape based on just room temperature, which you can imagine is quite useful if you've got quite an active job or you know your, your glasses are likely to get bent out of shape quite a lot, or you're just not very good at looking after them. Uh, the next one is used a, a, a lot in operations where you have arteries that need making bigger. So what um, surgeons will do is they'll feed through these um, metal frames into arteries that need to be widened and then uh, the natural body temperature will make the, the, the wire frame become bigger which inside the body which will make the artery bigger so you can imagine that's quite a useful uh, thing to have when you need to widen arteries um, and the next one are dental braces so they're really common they're made from nitinol uh, and they exert a constant force on the teeth to bend them um, back into shape over time. But that shape that they're bending to is the, the, the memorized shape of, the, of the, the wire. So really useful. OK, the last material I'd like to talk about is polymorph. So polymorph is a thermoplastic, which means it can be shaped and reshaped any number of times. So in a classroom, uh, what we do is we heat it in hot water and when the hot water reaches a certain temperature the granules which is what it's supplied in turns into a mass of clear material and when you remove it from the hot water you can shape it and you can mold it a little bit like putty uh, and then when it cools down it becomes solid but really solid um, like nylon um, so ways you can use it um, it is a useful material it is quite expensive but mainly it's only used for modeling and shaping where you need to make a really quick solid shape so you can see a few sort of examples of there um, of just little fixings and fixtures which uh, are used to help show how designs work um, it's not really used on commercial products which are sold OK, I'd like to do another quick memory test. So this is where you can get your, your pen and paper out again. So what I'd like you to do, based on what we've done so far, is can you list as many smart materials that you can remember from the lesson today? Again, pause the video and you can give yourself about five minutes to do this, but really test yourself uh, and see how well you get on. So this is the official list. Um, these are the ones that you will be expected to know uh, in, an, in an exam situation. So. Uh, you, need, you do need to try and commit these to memory and if you can give examples for each one like we went through today um, that's perfect okay so what i would like to do now is i want to leave you with the tasks which you can do on your um, blank paper and with a pencil i mean you can color it in you can add annotations to it as well which would be really useful so just a, a quick recap about how smart materials are used they're used within a range of products to make them function in different ways and it is about the function and how they work which is really important. So the task I'd like to set, set you is select a smart material that we've discussed today or one that you might have found during further research and I want you to redesign a product using the smart material to aid its function. So uh, don't worry if you haven't got A3 paper but if you use blank paper for this and just you know try and be as creative as you can and have fun with it. So. An example of this is, is here. So you've got a, a normal everyday baby spoon. Um, so what you might do is you might use a thermochromic pigment on that baby spoon to help parents to decide how hot the food is and whether it's too dangerous for a toddler or a little baby to, to feed from that spoon. OK, so it's quite simple, really. If you find that, that that's a little bit too easy and you want to challenge yourself a bit more, can you select a smart material and design a innovative original product that doesn't already exist uh, to use within that product to aid its function okay so hopefully you've enjoyed what we've gone through today you do need to try and commit lots of it to memory so if you, can, you can go through this video as many times as you like um, and you might want to sort of make 
extensive notes on parts of it to help you. Thank you very much.